Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a Thunderbolt dock from HP. This is their Thunderbolt dock G2. And while it has some features unique to HP computers, it will work with any device that supports Thunderbolt. And we'll take a look at what this dock is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this docking station is all about. Now the price point on this is $289, and that's on par with other Thunderbolt docks that we've looked at over the years. Now this is their 120 watt version, and this will deliver 100 watts of power to a computer over its Thunderbolt cable. And then it's got another 20 watts budgeted for devices that you plug into its ports, like hard drives and other things. They also make one they call the 230 watt version that will work with HP laptops that can support this combo connector for that 230 watt version. And what that does is it delivers 200 watts through that cable to the laptop. And then it's got another 30 watts budgeted for other devices that you might connect to it. But if you do not have an HP PC, you're not gonna be able to work really with the extra power in that 230 watt version. So I think this one is the one to look at. Now, as you can see, this one's got a ton of ports in the back, but which ports work are going to vary based on what you're plugging it into. So on the back here, we've got gigabit ethernet. I was able to get this to work with both Mac and PCs. You have two USB-A ports. These are Gen 1 ports that run at 5 gigabits per second. Now you're going to notice there are a ton of display options here. You've got two DisplayPort ports, an HDMI and a USB Type-C port that also works as a display output. Now this, under certain circumstances, will support up to four displays simultaneously but you have to have the right combination of displays to get all four working at once. I'm gonna put this chart up from their uh, tech specs here so you can see exactly what some of those combinations are. There are some limitations with the bandwidth that Thunderbolt can provide. So for most people who are trying to connect 4K displays, you're gonna be able to support a maximum of two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. But if you are running at lower resolutions or a combination of different resolutions, you can, as you can see at the bottom there, work out a combination to get four displays connected at the same time. Now, a little bit earlier, I connected up a PC to the dock and I was able to get three displays all running at 1080p working at the same time, but it's going to depend on your laptop supporting a particular display port mode. Your computer needs to support MST or multi-stream transport. This is part of the display port standard. Many PCs support it, but you should look up your PC specifications first before you buy the dock to be certain. Uh, HP does list on the product specs for this dock, which of their computers support MST, but for other brands, you'll need to do a little research first. Now my Mac, does not support MST. So to get two independent displays, what you have to do is connect one display up to one of these display outputs and then get a USB-C to HDMI or a USB-C to DisplayPort dongle and plug that dongle into the Thunderbolt pass-through here on the right-hand side. And then you can get two independent displays. If you plug in two displays into one of these ports on the Mac, you're just going to get a mirrored output. The Mac only sees those displays as a single one. So to get two independent displays, again, you've got to use this port on the right and not this one on the left. And that's one of the complexities you run into when all of these standards get mashed up into one port. Uh, but again, you'll find more support for this on the PC side. Now with that display complexity out of the way, let's take a look at some of the other ports on here. Now, in addition to supporting display output, the USB-C port here on the left will also work with data devices. And this is a Gen 2 port, so it'll support up to 10 gigabits per second of USB bandwidth. Over here is that pass-through connector I talked about earlier. So you can, of course, plug in another display here, or you can plug in additional Thunderbolt devices here. So one use case I tested out a little bit earlier was having a single display 
hooked up to the display output on my Mac, and then I plugged in my 10 gig Ethernet adapter into the Thunderbolt port here, and I was able to get my 3 gigabit internet connection running at full speed with a single cable going back to the computer. So that worked pretty well there. On the other side here, we've got another USB-A port. This one is also a 5 gigabit per second port. You have a Kensington lock port here uh, for using a locking mechanism to keep your dock from walking away. And then on the front of the dock here, we have another USB Type-C port. This is not Thunderbolt here on the front. This port will also do 10 gigabits per second, but it shares the bus with the other USB port on the back. So if you're running two of those solid state drives at the same time, they're going to share the bandwidth. And then the cable to plug your computer in is permanently attached to the dock here, but it's got a decent cable length to it. And then on the left-hand side of the dock here, we've got another USB-A port, and this one is always powered, so even when your laptop is not attached, it will charge whatever is plugged into it, so that's always a handy feature to have. Now, surprisingly, the power adapter here is not obnoxiously large like it is on a lot of the other 100-watt docking stations we've looked at, and it's also got a really nice long power cable, so you can pretty much hide it uh, wherever you've got an outlet and be able to have the dock sit on the desk. Now on the top, there is a button, and on HP computers, this button will sleep and wake your laptop when you walk up to it, but it is not supported on non-HP computers. And additionally, there are some enterprise features for HP laptops only that this dock can be configured to work with. Those include wake on LAN support, it also has the ability to pass the MAC address from the laptop to the Ethernet port on the back here for better security. All right, let's do a real world example now using my MacBook Pro. I've got an Ethernet cable connected to the dock's Ethernet port. I have an HDMI cable plugged into its HDMI port out to this 4K60 monitor. And we're going to attach this one cable to my Mac. And we should hear it charging, which it just did. So now we are charging, and we should see now the monitor here kick on once everything gets negotiated. Sometimes it takes a few seconds for it to come up, but it will. There we go. It'll blink once there, and then it'll be good to go. I can move my window over here, and as you can see, we have an independent display extending from the Mac's own internal display here. And if I check the display settings, we are running at 60 hertz, which is good. So everything appears to be up and running here. Now I also have the gigabit ethernet attached to the network adapter on the back of it here. And if I do a quick speed test here, you can see we're getting about the full gigabit that that ethernet adapter provides. Now, of course, you could plug in a Thunderbolt adapter into that Thunderbolt pass-through port on the back if you need more bandwidth, but it looks like uh, the onboard Ethernet here is working as I would expect it to work. So let's take a look and see how those Gen 2 USB ports work. We're going to plug in a Samsung T7 to the front port here, and this drive supports Gen 2 speeds, and we'll see how it compares to what I typically get on my Mac. So we'll start the test here. We're getting about 670 megabytes per second on writes, and it usually goes a little slower on the reads for some reason, even when it's plugged into my Mac. And here we're seeing about the same behavior. So it's pretty close to what uh, this drive does on my Mac when plugged in directly. Now, if you have a Thunderbolt drive, you're going to want to connect that Thunderbolt drive to the Thunderbolt pass-through port on the back, not the USB-C ports, because those will run slower, or in the case of many Thunderbolt drives, not work at all, even though they use the same port. It's confusing. Uh, you also have to be aware that you are sharing the bandwidth off of this cable. So everything that this dock is doing is going back and forth over the 40 gigabits of bandwidth that the Thunderbolt cable can provide. So if you really need to get the most out of your solid state drives, you're going to want to connect those directly to the computer but the dock does not appear to be introducing any bottlenecks or overhead here, and it seems to be performing quite well. Overall, I like the way it looks. It's a really attractive dock, a lot nicer looking than some of the other ones we've looked at. It seems to perform quite well. It's got decent port selection, and if you've got a PC that supports MST, you get all the ports for display output built into the dock, and you still have the Thunderbolt pass-through available. I think that offers a lot of flexibility that some of the other docks I've looked at don't. So that's one 
uh, notch in favor of this one. If you're on a Mac, you will have to use that Thunderbolt pass-through to add the second display, but it seems to work as well on the Mac as it does on Windows, minus some of those display issues. That is going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.